Now, I will sketch the proof of our theorems. Let's consider the case our surface M is immersed in the unit sphere F3. I denote this immersion by X. And consider uh, F3 as a hypersurface in F4 given by the canonical embedded of F3 in F4. So in this way, our surface M is now a submanifold of R4 of dimension two. In R4, we fix an autonomous basis of uh, parallel vector fields, here denoted by E1 bar, et cetera, E4 bar. And uh, we denote by EI, for each I, the projections of these vector fields onto our surface M, the orthogonal projections. So in this decomposition here, in this equation, we can choose uh, nu, the unit normal of F3 in F4, of course, as the immersion, for instance, minus, just for convenience, just by minus X. And uh, I'd like to mention also that these coefficients here are important in the, appears in many places in the proof. We denote by GI, the inner product of uh, EI bar with N, and by FI, the inner product of EI bar with nu. So we can rewrite this equation in this short way. I also include here a constant C just to present the proof in both cases simultaneously. Because uh, if you are in the case of immersion in R3, it's equivalent to choose C as zero in the, the proof. And in the case of uh, immersion in R3, this constant is just one, of course. Okay. Well, if you do not buy C as most vector field on M, in general, we do not buy omega, it's dual one form, just a notation. Well, the main idea in the proof, actually, it's inspired in the works of uh, Hawes and Savo, is to use the coordinates of a vector field C as test functions when the one form omega is harmonic. So let's do that here also. And uh, we do these test functions, these coordinates by VI for GI. If you are in the case of uh, Euclidean three space, we have just I from one to three. And uh, of course, VI can be given as the inner part of VI with C or equivalently, the one form omega applied to EI. So the, the main step main calculation, the proof is to compute the Laplacian, the Jacob operator of uh, these test functions VI, and the main part of the Jacob operator, of course, is the Laplacian. And it's given by this lemma here. In the case of a closed orientable CMC surface in M3 bar here, M3 bar denotes either the unit sphere, if C is one or the clean space, three space, if C is zero. So in any case, the Laplacian of these test functions VI is given by this equation here, which involves the second fundamental form, the norm of the second fundamental form, the mean curvature, and uh, this function GI, FI, and the, here we present the, the, the lemma the Laplacian of VI in the case of a generic vector field C, the smooth vector field. In the proof, when we assume this vector field or equivalent, the form is harmonic, this last term here, of course, uh, vanishes. Okay. And uh, I think it's an important lemma, it's a fundamental lemma actually, in the proof. And I start now. Uh, present the proof of this lab. We fix an automobile basis, a frame on M, 
which is geodesic at a point P. And we do the computation, of course, on that point. The first observation is that the connection, the derivative of this vector field EI in the direction of um, EK, small EK, is given by GI applied to A in EK plus C FI EK. It follows directly from the equation we present for EI. And you recall that uh, the derivative of the unit normal n is minus a. And of course, uh, the derivative of uh, the immersion is just the identity. OK. So we start computing the Laplacian. And uh, since our frame is geodesic at a point, the Laplacian is given just by this derivative here, the second derivative in the, in the proof of simplicity, we use the Einstein notation. So it's, it's a sum here in K. Well, VI, just recall, is the inner product of uh, PI with C. So when you compute this first derivative here, we have these three terms, which involves the second derivative, first case of VI here, this mixed term and, and the third term is the second derivative of C. Uh, let's compute uh, let's compute each of these terms sums actually separately, and uh, we denote the first one by i, the second one by two i, etc. One, two, three. Let's compute. Let's compute the first term now. So recall that uh, here we have a sum and we just present in the previous slide, what is the first derivative of uh, EI in the direction of EK. And so we plug it here. And uh, it's also simple computation to check that uh, EK applied to GI is minus EI bar, the inner product of EI bar with A applied to EK and the derivative of uh, FI in the direction of EK is given by this in that property here. So plugging, computing here and substituting these terms, we have these three terms here, which I just repeated here. So the one is given by this and recall again, we are summing K so this sum here is just the inner product with minus of A applied to EI with uh, A applied to C. And here we use just this, the frame is again geodesic to write this derivative this way. And here again, we, we, use the, we are summing K so this last term can be written just as this inner product. And of course, this, this is our test function again, VI. Here in the first term, we use that uh, A is a symmetric tensor. So we can write this form. And this second term, you use the Kodas equation, we can commute e, this, this inner product EK with C. And uh, here uh, it's important to say that uh, it works this way in the case of uh, space forms. Um, and now we note that uh, this second term is, it is just the trace of the derivative of the tensor A in the direction of C and recall that uh, the, the, this derivative commutes with the trace. And finally, here we use that the trace is constant because it's two times the mean curvature and uh, it's a main hypothesis. So it, this, it vanishes. And our first term, the Laplacian of VI is given by these uh, two terms here 
but you can do more. I'll just repeat again. I, we note that um, in the two dimensional case, actually, uh, symmetric tensor or symmetric matrices satisfies this identity here. And uh, it's very useful to us and I plug in, in this equation. So the first term is given ju just substitute here and uh, just uh, arranging the terms, we can write the first term of the, La the, the Laplacian of BI in this way. So not this, this first, we'll have a one half here, et cetera. We can so see what happens at the end. Let's compute the, the second term. It's more simple. Again, we are summing K. Uh, recall just, uh, you already know what's the derivative of e, EI in the direction of EK. And um, just uh, write uh, using the sum here. And now note that this inner product here is the inner product of the, the two tensor A with the covariant derivative of C as a two tensor two. So it's the, this term here. And the second one is just the divergence of the vector field C. And uh, that's all for the second term. So to the last one, we note that this sum here is the rose Laplacian of this vector field C. The Bachner formula in this case says that this rose Laplacian is given by this sum here, minus the Laplacian of C plus the, 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 the our case, the Gauss curvature times the, the vector field C. So, uh, we use the Gauss equation in this way. I mean, they can write the Gauss curvature in this formula here. Again, we are here, see the, the notes in this case, one in the case of a sphere, zero in the case of the plane space. So, plugging K in this form in our last computation, we found that uh, the, the, this last term can be right in this form and can be rewrite in this way, okay? So, uh, so, so that to conclude the lemma, we, we just need to sum these two terms. I just like to mention that this, this second term is CVI cancels with this minus CVI here. And so we have exactly the, the lemma. Now let's come back to the proof of the theorem. We observe here that if, uh, since our omega is our monk, is our monk form, then the star, the hot star of omega is also a monk. And uh, of course, uh, since we are in a surface, in a two dimensional Himalayan manifold, M, Omega is one form and this star of omega is also one form. So we can consider, can consider or construct the test functions given by this new one form, new harmonic form, star omega. We denote this new the set of new test functions by VI. And of course it's given, can be given by star omega applied to EI. And uh, since both omega and star omega are harmonic forms, we conclude that these test functions, both vi and the vi bar, lies in our space. It means that the integral of vi and the integral of vi bar is zero. So the we can use it means that, that we can use effectively these functions to compute to estimate the index, they are in the space F. Well, now, since the operator L 
This is an elliptic self-adjunct operator. It admits a sequence of eigenvalues diverging to plus infinity. We denote here by lambda one, lambda two, etc. Um, and we fix an autonormal basis in the space L2 of M given by the eigenfunctions to this operator L. And for each fixed K, we denote by this LK, the subspace of L2, which is orthogonal to the first K eigenfunctions fixed here, okay? It's a, just a notation. So using this notation, we know from the min max characterization of eigenvalues that the lambda k eigenvalues of the operator L is in fact the infimum of this quotient if, uh, um, if the function u lies in this space L, in this case Lk minus one. So in particular, each uh, lambda k eigenvalues can be estimated from above by this really quotient. And uh, note also that um, this, the integral of u, L, u is the same as the integral of u, j, u, if the functions u has integral zero. So have this identity here, which will be the case because we apply to the functions vi and vi bar. So using this, Characterization or estimates for the lambda k eigenvalue. If you wish to estimate the lambda k eigenvalue, we need to, to have our test functions in this space of LK, right? So we look for harmonic forms omega such that the corresponding test functions vi and vi bar lie in the space LK minus one for some k and uh, for i from one to four, if you are in the sphere, or one to three, if you are in the case of uh, the Euclidean space, three space. In other words, we have a system with uh, a times k minus one linear equations, homogeneous linear equations in the variable c, this one, the system one here. And uh, so if the dimension of the space of harmonic forms is bigger than the number of equations, then this system has at least one non-trivial solution. And so we conclude that vi and vi bar lie in the space LK minus one. So if it's the case, then we can use the min-max characterization. And so we get these inequalities just uh, present and um, where J is the Jacob operator here. And then we can now apply the lemma where you computed the Laplacian of these functions VI and plug it here. And so now in this lemma, I'm already using the fact that this, the omega, the, the harmonic form is the, the form, the one form omega is harmonic. So we have this inequality here, let's analyze. I just repeat these inequalities. And um, the idea is to sum these inequalities in I. And uh, so recall that uh, Fi is the inner part of uh, EI bar with nu and gi is the inner part of ei bar with n. So the sum here of gi times vi is zero because the sum is the inner part of n and c. And the same here, the sum of fi times vi is the inner part of uh, nu with c. So when you sum these last two integrals vanish, um, in the first integral, the sum here of vi square is just the norm of c square. And in the second integral, the sum here 
is just the inner product of xi and a of xi. And uh, now we'll do the same for the functions vi bar. And we get this second inequality here. I just, I repeat the previous one with where you do the computations with vi and uh, the second one we get when you do the computations with the functions vi bar. And here, this vector field c bar <coughs> is a vector field corresponding to the, the one form, the hot star of omega. So this vector field is so the p over two counterclock rotation of the vector field c. So c and c bar are orthogonal and they have the same norm, the same length. So, and using this fact, we can use, we sum these two inequalities here and note that in this, this last term, we help obtain, when you sum and divide by two, we help obtain the mean curvature of uh, our surface M. And uh, so here we get 2h squared with plus, and here we have a minus 4h squared. So at, at the end, finally, we get that um, lambda k, so the most important here says lambda k is negative. That's the conclusion. Uh, and uh, by definition, it implies that the weak index of M is at least K. So let's analyze uh, what this K can say for us. This K can be chosen as the largest integer such that 2G, which is, I forgot to say, 2G is the dimension of the space of harmonic forms, where G is the genus of the surface. It's a, and so, we choose k as the largest integer such that this inequality here holds. And here I write uh, six plus two c just to indicate both case, the case of Euclidean space and uh, the sphere. So if it's the case, you can it implies that uh, k is at least g over three plus C. And so it's our estimate for the index. Uh, I'd like to mention for a moment some uh, recent developments. Uh, IX and Hong have extended our results for a class of ambient three manifolds as in the work of Ambrosio, Carlut and Sharp. And uh, recently Silva prove the lower bond for the index of minimal and semi closed surface immersed in some three manifolds that admit an orthogonal killing frame. It's called uh, the killing property. And uh, as a byproduct, uh, he obtained some low results. And uh, also he found a new lower bonds for CMC surface in the projective tree space. And uh, in the work in progress, I know Adalto and Batista have proved a lower bone for the index of minimum sub manifolds, higher co-dimension in the sphere and also in other symmetric manifolds in terms of the first bet number. Now, I'd like to say some uh, few words about the free boundary case. We denote by W, w a region bounded in the Euclidean tree space, bounded by smooth functions. And uh, in this region, we consider, denote by M again, a compact orientable free boundary CMC surface. Uh, and situation more or less like in this picture here. Uh, w is this region bound by some surface. B 
is the boundary could have some singularities, the intersection of the surface could be not as smooth. And uh, we have a surface in this region, and it is the surface is free boundary. It means that the boundary of M reaches the boundary of the region omega in a right angle, like in this picture. Uh, the point is that surf surfaces are also critical points for the area functional for volume preserving variations, whose boundary now are free to move along the boundary of uh, W. And uh, here we have uh, two pictures. And this first one is a spherical cap inside. It. The region here is the unit ball, three ball. And the first picture have a spherical cap is an example of a free boundary CMC surface. And here, it's an example of also a, a free boundary. It's a, it's a, it's a piece of a Delaney surface, which is a CMC, complete CMC surface in R3. And uh, there are some pieces of Delaney surface which are free boundary in the unit ball. Well, if uh, nu denotes the conormal vector field along the boundary of M, and the second variation of the area functional in this case is given by this quadratic form, which has now two components, the integral in the interior of M, which is the same as in the case of closed surface, and uh, uh, integral on the boundary of M, which involves the, der the derivative of the, the functions, that function u in the direction of eta, but also the second fundamental form of the, the region, of the boundary of the region in the direction of the uh, normal vector field to a. Um, we also denote by HT1, the space of closed and co-closed one forms that are tangential to the boundary of M. And uh, the fact here is that the dimension of this space is also related with the topology of the surface. The dimension is 2G plus K minus 1, where G is again the genus, the topological genus of M and K is the number of boundary components of M. Recall that our surface is compact now with boundary. Well, like it's important to say that in this setting, Ambrosio, Carlotta, and Sharp proved a lower bound for the index of free boundary minimum hypersurface in mean convex body in Euclidean space using this tangential harmonic forms. And uh, also Pan Sargent, same year more or less, has some related results in this direction. Now, if uh, omega is uh, one form in this space, HT1, then the corresponding test function, the coordinates of the vector field C, the functions VI, has integral zero uh, because the, the corresponding vector field is tangential to the boundary. So this last, the second integral is zero. However, it's no longer true for the functions vi bar uh, corresponding to how the star of omega exactly because uh, this integral is not zero anymore. And uh, so we need to impose a new set of equations in our system in order to solve this problem. Actually, we, this is a set here of equations. Uh, following the same steps as in the closed case, we get this theorem, our second theorem. We denote by double our region, R3, uh, bounded by a union of smooth surface, which are weakly mean convex, 
It means that the mean curvature of each surface is no negative. Uh, we do not buy M a compact orientable free boundary CMC surface merged in the mean convex side of this region and whose boundary intersects only the regular part of the boundary. So in this case, we prove that the weak index of this free boundary CMC surface is bounded from below by 2G plus K minus four over six. As I mean, so by the topology, we estimate the index by the topology of the surface. Uh, direct consequence of uh, this theorem is when you analyze the case of stable CMC surface, I mean, it means that the weak index is zero. And in this case, we here obtain the following result of Antonio Ross in 2008, where he proved that uh, if uh, M is a CMC surface, stable free boundary CMC surface, then the only possibilities for the genus and the number of boundary components are these two, two possibilities here. We can do the same uh, for weakly mean convex domain in the unit sphere. And uh, in this case, we get this estimate for the weak index in terms of the topology again, and uh, the case of uh, stable uh, surface, free boundary CMC surface in boundary domains of uh, the unit sphere, the only possibilities for the genus and the, the number of components are these three possibilities here. So that's all. Thank you very much.